You can't gang! So this is an ABAS model. We're in an inflationary gap. Does so anybody have any questions? I love it. <laughs> What's up, Econ Gang? This is Mr. Jager. Today we're going to be talking about supply and demand equilibrium. If you're reading uh, Krugan's Economics or an AP course, the third edition, this will be Module 7. This is the perfect video if you're taking an AP course or an introductory macroeconomics course. Okay, our equilibrium is going to be the intersection point of the demand curve and the supply curve. This is where supply and demand are going to meet on the graph where there is an intersection. Now, looking at the graph, you can see on the y-axis, we have candy bars, price of candy bars. On the x-axis, we have quantity of candy bars. We can see that the quantity supplied is going to be 25, and the quantity demanded is going to be 25, equaling each other at the dollar price. So our equilibrium price is going to be a dollar, and our equilibrium quantity is going to be 25. Our equilibrium point is where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. Now, there are times when there are more products in the market, right? And there's not as much demand. This would be where we would see a surplus. And a surplus is gonna happen above the equilibrium point. Now, surplus is when quantity supply is greater than quantity demanded. So if we wanna know how much of a surplus is happening in this graph, we can see that the quantity demanded for candy bars at the price $2 is going to be 15. So only 15 people want to buy candy bars at $2. Now, the quantity supplied, how much producers are wanting to sell, is they want to sell 35 candy bars at $2. So the buyers are only buying up 15. So we want to know how much of a surplus, how much is being left out in the market. Well, you, what you do is you just take quantity supplied and subtract that from quantity demanded. And that's going to give you 20 candy bars. So there's 20 candy bars in surplus in this market. Now moving on to shortages, just like surpluses, there are shortages in the market. Shortages are going to be short of the equilibrium point. They're going to be below the equilibrium point. And when a shortage occurs is when quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. So people are lining up, they're wanting to buy candy bars, but the producers are just not producing as much at that particular price. So at 50 cents, producers only want to produce 20 candy bars, but demand is at 30 candy bars. So we're at a shortage of 10 candy bars. What that means basically is, is that you have 10 people that are wanting to buy candy bars, but they're just not able to because nobody's selling candy bars. They've already run out. The sellers have already sold what they're going to sell at 50 cents. Now, there are three questions that we need to answer in this is why do all sales of purchases in a market take place at the same time? Why does the market price fall if it is above the equilibrium price? And why does the market price rise if it's below the equilibrium price? So in other words, why does the price fall if we're in a surplus? And why does the price raise if we're in a shortage? When in a market, the price tends to move towards the market price, which is set by both the buyer and seller, meaning that you're going to eventually move up or down towards the equilibrium point. The invisible hands that Adam, you know, Adam Smith came up with is going to push the buyer to buy at certain price points and push the seller to lower their prices. Now, Buyers with the knowledge of the price elsewhere will not buy from a seller if they are selling for too high. Meaning if the price for candy bars is too high and they know they can get that candy bar somewhere else, they're going to go to another place and buy that candy bar. It just makes sense, right? You're not going to pay $2 for a candy bar when you know just next door is going to be, you can buy that same candy bar for a dollar. Sellers will not sell for too low knowing that they will be better off or sell for too high if people will not purchase from them. So sellers know this too, right? So they want to make sure that they're putting out a price that people are going to pay for. And they're not going to overprice their good and they're not going to underprice their good because if they underprice their good, well, they're going to need to sell a lot more than their competitors. Now, sellers will try to undercut prices to rid themselves of excess supply. So if there is a surplus, right? What sellers will then do is they will start to cut prices. They will lower prices. And why will they lower prices? They'll lower prices so more people can buy that excess supply. That's the surplus, buy into the surplus. Now, a shortage, buyers will bid up the price to get the product since there is excess demand. Meaning, 
if you, we're running out of candy bars and we're in a classroom and someone comes in and they're trying to sell candy bars and there's only five candy bars that they're selling and they are selling them for a dollar, well, maybe they would be interested in selling it for a dollar twenty-five, depending on how many people, if there's 10 people that want to buy those candy bars and there's only five candy bars, you could sell them to the top five people that wanna pay the most for them, right? So that would move up the shortage into equilibrium. Now, the market price will always move the price and the quantity towards equilibrium. Now, what happens if we are going to shift the demand curves or shift the supply curve? We'll get into here shortly. But if we're going to shift the demand curve and there's an increase in demand, we're going to see a new equilibrium price. Here we can see our demand curve, our first demand curve, D sub one, we see that the equilibrium price is a dollar and that the equilibrium quantity is 25. Well, an increase in demand is a shift to the right, and you can see that price levels have increased from a dollar to a dollar fifty. You can also see that the quantity has increased from twenty-five to thirty. So you see a price increase and a quantity increase. Now, what happens if we were to decrease demand? You would then see that price would drop, right? You would also see that quantity would increase as well, being a new equilibrium point. Also, our demand curve is shifting to the left, indicating a decrease in demand. Now, what about supply? Same concept goes here, right? If we shift supply to the right, we would see a price drop and a quantity increase, right? And then if we were to shift supply to the left or a decrease in supply, price would increase and quantity would decrease, giving us a new equilibrium point for all of these different scenarios. Now. There is possibilities when there could be a simultaneous shift, meaning that there's supply and demand shifts at the same time. My suggestion for when you do a double shift is that you do it separately. So first do your supply, then do your demand shift, and then see what happens to price and what happens to quantity. Now here the thing is, or there's a double shift rule, the double shift rule indicates that either price or quantity will be indeterminate. What that means is, is we don't know what's gonna happen to one of price or quantity, right? So we have to leave it as indeterminate. And how would we be able to tell which one's indeterminate? Well, if we shift supply curve and we see that price increases and we see that quantity decreases, then we do the separate graph and we do it for demand and we see that price increases and quantity increases. Well then, we know that product price is gonna increase because both supply and demand curve, the price increased. Before we saw that quantity increased and quantity decreased. So therefore, quantity would be indeterminate. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you guys had an awesome time with this video. If you guys could please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, hit that like button and it really helped me out. All right, thanks, guys. Peace.